Okay, okay, good to see everyone in here. So we got a mixed range of people. We got some uh, highly educated people in the room as well. So that's always good to have in the room. So let's get started here. What the, the topic today is how to trade breakouts. Okay, how to trade breakouts. How many guys have some experience with trading breakouts? Yeah, some experience. Yeah, I know. I know all you forex watchers people have experience trading breakouts. But let's let's dive straight into it today. Okay, so just uh, as we begin, so uh, the room is packed. It's been packed for like 30 minutes, I think. Uh, for those of you who couldn't get in, I apologize. You can watch the recordings, or if you're already watching the recordings, um, I've been noticing it, the room gets full 30 minutes prior. So we're working on a new webinar system where you can, as many people as they want can get in. It's gonna be unlimited uh, attendance. Okay, so we're gonna bump it up to 1,000, 2,000 people for attendance. So. All right, let's get started here. Let's get started here. Okay. So what kind of uh, breakouts are there? What things can break out? What what techniques can break out? Okay, news, range, support resistance. Okay, candle patterns. Supply and demand, okay, very similar to support resistance, but okay. Supply and demand, and fib levels, okay. Now, if we are looking at this list, if we're looking at this list, isn't that practically everything in the market? That's practically the whole market. Like, <laughs> so basically, trading a breakout is not a specific thing. Breakouts is a specific style. Okay, there is no oh this time we're gonna do something else and then that time we're gonna do breakouts. No, you can do a breakout at any time. It depends how you how you target it and how you uh, approach it. Okay, so breakouts. Let's start from the very beginning and we'll start from there. Okay, now. The news breakouts, they're the most deadliest ones and the most dangerous ones, okay? Because the news breakouts can whipsaw. Okay, does that does that make sense? How many of you guys here uh, trade news breakouts? Twice, me, okay, okay, too dangerous, <laughs> never again, okay, good, 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 okay. Trading a breakout for the sake of a breakout is simply telling the market you are unaware which direction the market is going to go. Give me something and I'll trade that way. Okay. And then a million strategies around it have been developed, but no understanding of what a breakout really is. So we're going to go into that deep today. Okay. We're going to go deep into that. We're going to uncover that myth and everything where all the trading strategy out there that's like a whole breakout strategy is just useless because this, my friends, is a breakout, right? When the markets go above this line, everyone is hitting a buy, okay? Everyone's hitting a buy, and what happens to their buys? They get killed, right? They get killed. So when you, when you look at situations like this, all breakouts and stuff like that can be very dangerous. Now, take a look at this one. That's a breakout right so let's go through all the breakout strategies that you can think of we're gonna go one by one okay breakout strategy number one if it breaks below hit the sell that guy loses breakout strategy number two if it breaks below let it pull back and hold below that same support resistance and then you hit the sell okay here's the sell afterwards there meander 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 stop loss Okay. And then we're looking at a whole bunch of things like, oh, well, if you have a breakout, put your stop loss up on this, this, this area up here. And that's when we say go home. Okay. That's when we say go home, because if you're trading with a stop loss that big, what's the point? 
right? Which time frame is this? Let me open this up here. This is on the 15 minute chart that I'm looking at here. Yeah, you guys can see it on the left now here. Zero USD on the 15 minute time frame. Okay. Ranges. Ranges. Can everyone tell me that this is a range? Is this true? Is that a range? Yeah? Okay. What if I do this? Okay, do you guys see that market there now? At that point, did you know it was a range? No. Would you know to sell once the market gets up to this area? No. Okay, but what happens when the range develops? At what point do you notice the range is developing? Okay, let's move this forward, move this forward. Market gets up to here, very, very strong. We're still unaware there's a range situation here. Okay, Linus, no higher highs, no lower lows. Excellent, excellent. But we need that data first to say it's a range. We can't just declare it a range yet, right? Yeah, four touches basically. Excellent figure, uh, Philip and uh, Eddie. Okay, and then the market comes back down and right around the base, it starts to react. Now, take a look at this first one here. When this green candle shows up where my arrow is, uh, can everyone hear me just fine? Yeah, okay, so let's keep, let's keep going. Okay, at this point where the green candle just pops right up, really, really strong there. Wouldn't that person be like, hmm, the range is right there. That's the range. And then a buy might be hit right there. Thinking that we're on the fourth touch. I can see there was no higher high. I can see the market struggling to come down to make a lower low. And then that green candle comes and I'm like, yes, it's a buy. What happens to that buy? Okay, the buy gets the buy gets cut, right? It gets stopped out, stopped out. Yeah. All right. Then the market proceeds to go long and long and long. The whole thing has left now. You are sitting there waiting for a breakout, but no breakout to understand at what point do I get in? At what point can I get in? And how do I trade this range thing? If there is a range, how do I trade it? You know, because once I get this fourth point down here, then I, my mind is stuck to a range and I'm expecting to sell from here because that's the fifth touch. So if that's the fifth touch, I'm looking at selling that thing. Well, what happens to that sell? Also out, too late, right? So understanding the market, like I always teach you guys in all my webinars, is reading the market is where it all makes a difference. Okay, and then you can incorporate the secondary stuff is what's your edge? Your edge meaning are you a trend pullback trader? Are you a range trader? Are you a breakout trader? And all that stuff. Okay, so we're just identifying the scenarios right now. Once we identify them, then we're gonna go into what and the hows in a bit. Okay, so can anyone relate to this? You guys can all relate to this? That there is uncertainty in, in figuring out when the right moment is. Right? Okay, so let's move further. Let's move further. Let's open this up more. Okay, now let's dig deeper into this. Now, first of all, understanding logic of support equals resistance. Let's go into that. Do you, were, how many of you guys were here last webinar? Put a one. Okay, we went through support equals resistance last webinar. Okay, and for those of you who do not know it, most likely if you're watching this recording, there will be a link somewhere showing up on the recording 
or it's going to be in the description. All right, here, take a look at this one right here. If I draw this as my support, is that correct? No, because that's not the place where the market held. Yeah, that's not the place where the market held. Take a look at this price right here, where the market kept coming down to, moving away from, down to, probed out, and held on the upper side of it. Which means this is just a tail. It looks like a candle got through, but it didn't. On a higher time frame, it would look like this. But if I go down to a lower time frame, I'll see all of these tails filled up like a candle. Is that correct? You guys, you guys understand that logic? It's exactly what you see right here. This right here is nothing but a tail, but on this time frame, it looks like there's two candles that got out. Clear? So keep an eye out for these things because we're going to use these things um, as a understanding of what is going on. All right, so if I put my line back to where it's supposed to be, and then I say, okay, well, I didn't make a higher high. Okay, uh, okay, I'm gonna go through it one more time. Uh, it looks like there was some confusion there. When the market goes through your support resistance but comes right back, that down there is just a tail. If you go up a higher time frame, it looks like this. You see these tails? If you see these tails, how would you draw your support? Would you draw your support here, the price is holding here? Or would you draw your support here, or price is holding here? If you draw it down here, what's gonna happen is you don't see that price got rejected and resumed from this area. This is a rejection area. Price keeps getting knocked back. That means this price is not wanted. If I go to a lower time frame on the five minute or the one minute, this this tail that you see is going to be full of candles. But in reality, nothing happened there. The market went there and came right back. Make sense? All right. So, Chris, uh, there's a question. So on minor support resistance, putting down two lines for areas are unnecessary. Yes, for minor ones, that's correct. Okay, so keeping a close eye on how quickly the market went out and came back like this. Take a look at this one. That is your resistance right there. The price went above, but he came right back down quickly. That's your resistance. Okay, it's not up here. Okay, so you'll get the hang of when you play around like this, you get the hang of seeing the higher time frame and the lower time frame all in one picture. It's like seeing the universe above and below on one screen. Okay, so moving back to moving back to this area here. So we got a resistance up here holding. And then we got our support. We're like, it's not here, it's here. I'm gonna extend this out. So I'm gonna extend this out using the, the array. So I have an idea in case I don't see the future. And it gets extended out all the way to the right. So I use the array to extend it out. And then the price starts coming down and down and down and down. Now at what point do I start thinking that this could be a range? When I have this, when I have that, when I have this, is it at that point I start thinking, okay, we got three, no higher highs, no lower lows, and for some reason, this price keeps respecting this resistance again and again and again because it moved away from this resistance. But this time it's coming in for the fourth touch and we're like, what if this support or previous resistance reactivates okay so instead of putting our focus on trading the breakout here which is getting into the game very 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 late we need to put all of our attention and putting a little bit of homework and focusing on grabbing the move 
Does that make sense? Let me restart the audio maybe. It looks like it's going in and out for many of you guys. All right, is that better? Okay. Yeah, it, it may cut a little bit sometimes. Just uh, bear with me. If there's something you want me to repeat, just let me know. Okay. So the market then pulls back and pulls back and pulls back. And as we discussed in some of the previous webinars is when, when the markets are pulling back like that, that's a hint because you're comparing this downtrend to the previous uptrend. How is the downtrend compared to this uptrend here? Slow, right? So if it's slow, weak and choppy, or slower, okay, good. Now, let's, let's still take a step back and think. How is this uptrend compared to the downtrend here? How's that uptrend? Strong. Okay. And then how is this uptrend here? Yeah. Strong and also fast. That's correct. It's also strong, right? But now answer this question. If it's also strong, why did he not break this resistance? That means someone up there is knocking it down. Not enough force. Yeah. Some some price up there, there's still, yeah, exactly. There's still sellers up there. They're still waiting to hit the market back down. So when you see this stuff coming down, you can see it's weak, but you're like, well, it's got three touches. It didn't make a higher high. That means sellers have some power. You can't expect it to hit it midway, but you might want to wait for it to get to the edge. Okay. But while waiting for the edge, you're looking for at what point do the sellers die? At what point do the sellers die? So here's a sell. The first, we're going to go through it piece by piece. Look, look at it very carefully. Here's the first seller. And then the green candles come in to retrace. How much retracement? 50%. Okay. Then the next sellers come in. How much retracement? 70%. Okay. Is 70% 100%? No, 70 is 70. That means sellers are still there. Hang in there. Then the sellers come in down to here and then we get a retracement. What kind of retracement is that? Fifty percent. OK, then the sellers try again. So notice what happened from before from 70 percent retracement to now 50 percent retracement. What does that tell you about the sellers? They're dying. No, that's the opposite. They went from 70% retracement down to 50% retracement. They're gaining momentum. They're, they're building up power. Look at the previous seller's movement. That little and the retracement, very deep. Look at the next movement from there all the way down to here and then like a 30% or 25% retracement there. Or 40% or I would say actually. So they're, they're gaining momentum. Now, it still doesn't mean they've covered everything yet. They're still running. Now, now that they're running, let's not forget the story. What happened here? What happened here? What is that red candle that came out and then it got smacked back? Yeah, it's called a probe, a fake out. Right. This tells you just like we did the prejudiceness up here saying that, uh, OK, I got the idea that I know the buyers are strong, but something up here knocks it down. I get that the buyers are strong and something up here or something. Whenever the sellers come here, it gets knocked back. Well, if the sellers are in control, we want to see if that something is alive. So as this comes to here. What happens here when this last seller comes in and then that big green candle comes?
buyers are coming yeah buyers wake up they're alive now those are the first traders the first traders get stopped out because the only thing to make money in this world is patience without patience is just loss in every aspects of life from money to relationships to even spirituality without patience it is just a loss okay first traders get in there get crucified okay what happens after the first traders get in the reaction comes back what happens to this what happens to this seller how far does he get okay how far does he get yeah he gets now this is a 15 minute candle let's say that candle opened up and it's eight minutes into the candle wouldn't this be a full red bar do you guys agree or not you didn't let the candle close only eight minutes into it it's a full red bar and now in the full red bar all the breakout traders are like bloody hell sell this sell it without under understanding what is actually happening is that right how many of you guys have, have felt in that trap have been screwed over by these big boys by you know moving them uh, markets like this right it happens to a lot of us it, it used to happen to me all the time i used to get sucked in i was like man i must have really bad luck man i keep getting stopped out and i know it's a long because every time i look at the market 10 hours later i'm like dude it went up why did i get stopped out yeah so just imagine if you if you know this knowledge now and going forward into trading you know you know going into the next week or the next month if you're doing trading like this and you have an idea of I know what they're trying to do. Imagine how your trading will be different. Imagine how much less losses will you have and how much more profit can you gain knowing this information because now you don't have to wait for your trade up here, but in fact, you're waiting for it down here with a better entry, better exit because you're in much earlier and you get to see, am I going to break through this? If I don't, well, at that stage, I'm going to move my stop losses to zero. And I will figure it out at that point once I see the market reaction the same way that I did going downtrend, I will do the same way going uptrend. Yeah, everyone with me? Who's with me? Yeah, just checking if anyone's sleeping. Okay, so there's four people not sleeping. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. You're all there. All right. So, when you see this when you see the spike out happening, okay, how can you tell there are, when there are going to be additional reactions? Okay, so the first signs are are something like this. When you see buyers stepping back in, you always need a test. You always need a test. Okay? Now, there are times when the market will just run away. If the market just runs away, there's not much you can do. Like for example, here, let's say you're waiting for a 100% retracement, but the 100% retracement never happens. But you see a probe happen, and the market's holding next to the probe. That is also a sign to hit. Okay? All right. So when this happens, it's a 100% retracement. Following the 100% retracement, we're like, okay, we're aware of this area, but we're aware that the sellers were dominant earlier, and this area reacts. Once this area reacts, you're waiting for the last push down that holds. Once the last push down tries to break below, think in your brain in this way that someone is selling at this stage. Someone is selling without the idea that the buyers are very, very strong. Someone is selling without doing the research that look at this buyer. Someone is selling with the idea without doing the research that look at this buyer. Someone is selling without the idea that this price down here is a hardcore reaction price. 
And when that person that someone sells and they get a stop out, it's time to trade because you, you were patient, you entered second. And when you enter after all the mistakes have happened, then you get to ride the profits. Okay. There's no V formation for a cell. Uh, cell from where, Linus? Uh, Surya Kanta, how long to wait? If you're in the buy, you mean? How long do you want to wait? Well, once you're in the trade, you're, you're going to have to ride it all the way to the top of the range is where you make your next decision on the top of the range. Okay, look how strong the green candles are afterwards. Once the green candles are very, very strong, you know your buyer is back, but the buyer keeps getting smacked down again and again and again. So you are watching this area very carefully. And at this point, you do your money management. You either close half of your trade or you close half and move your stop loss to zero and you take a risk with the other half to do a possibility of all of this. Right. So just a little bit of knowledge will will keep you away from buying up here and it will keep you away from a loss of selling down here. Does that make sense? This is a very common problem. Everyone who comes to Forex Watchers gets stuck in this little vibe of just getting uh, trapped into selling, trapped into buying or buying very, very late or selling very, very late. Yeah. Okay, this time of day also important, especially for fake breakouts. Um, Parish, no, no, the time of day will automatically fit in. If there is a range and everything and there's a breakout happening, the breakouts happening because the markets are active. So generally, you're going to be in a hot session when the breakout happens. Okay. Chris Sayers, um, I'm concerned about the fourth touch. How can you tell when all tests will end and will go long? Okay. So how many of you guys have a similar question to that? Where we, you guys want to recap this area again, the fourth area? Okay. We're going to go through the fourth area very in detail again and we're going to I'm going to change the language a bit so it can make a little bit more sense. All right. I want you guys to think as once three touches happen, right? Here's touch number 1. Sorry, uh here's touch number 1. Do do do. Here's touch number I'm just going to circle it. Here's touch number 2. Here's touch number 3. Right? Up until here, you guys are all with me, and I think you guys all got that. It's a, it's a simple three touches, no higher highs, uh, and uh, one low. Okay, now the fourth touch is coming in. You're thinking that you need to buy soon as it gets down to there. Forget the buy. I want you to start thinking like a seller. Just forget the buy. Think like a seller. So, you're this big seller, top dog from up here. You started this game right there. You're like, let's do this. Come on, boys, let's sell. The sell kicks off. Sell kicks off and you get a reaction back from the buyers. You're like, ah, damn you buyers. Sell kicks off again. Buyers react again. At this stage, you're starting to be like, well, what's wrong with my sell? Why isn't it going? You're starting to worry that my sell is not going to make it. But then this happens. He goes down further. And then once he goes down further, what's in your mind for that sell? If he goes down further, what are you thinking as a seller? Yes, still going, keep it, it's gonna go forever. The seller has not quit because now he's just got that little drug of hold it, hold it, hold it. What happens afterwards? He retraces a bit, 40%. He's not worried, he's holding it because his mind is trained to hold it now because he just got the, the whiff of winning goes down further, reacts. He's like, huh, it's taken some time. Goes down a little bit more, no lower low, a full reaction. Okay, 
Now, full reaction. He's now thinking, should I exit this? What's going on? Remember, just like the winning traders have to trade second, the losing trader does not give up his trade until he actually loses. Will you guys remember that sentence? The same way a losing trader will not lose his trade until he actually starts to lose. Okay, so when this buy comes in right here, he still feels he's a winner. He still feels he's a winner. It hasn't gone much. But when the sell comes down again and he gets down to this far, and he's rejoicing like, oh, hell yeah, we're breaking out. We're going to make new lows. It snaps back up really hard. That's going to get him concerned. When it comes down again, no lows again. Now, this is the third, fourth time, no lows, and it snaps back up, up to there. At this point, he's going to get rid of his position. So any trades that you activate as a buy in this circle of reference gets you in a winning state of mentality because the trade's going to go. The sellers are looking to quit. So to, to be a buyer, you must get in the mindset of a seller and, and find out when is he going to give up and throw in the white towel. Does that make sense? So put yourself in the situation as a seller and think psychologically. At what point will I still hold on? At what point will I still hold on? At what point will I still hold on? And at what point will I quit? Okay? And don't forget, people are stubborn. If they're in a cell, they're, they're going to hold that cell for a bit. They're stubborn. So you have to wait for that secondary push down. Okay? So hopefully that explains the fourth touch. All right. And then the buyers come in and then they take the market long. And we're not going to go into how do you learn how to hold on and uh, stuff like that. So we're going to discuss that in probably another webinar or, or, or uh, any webinar discussion like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change the breakout in a different way. Now this time I'm going to test you guys. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to test you guys to see how far did you guys pick up this stuff. Yeah, you guys ready? You guys ready to do a little exercise? Yeah, okay, so let's do this. Breakouts can also happen from trend lines, right? Would you guys agree that this is a trend line here if I draw it like that? Okay, so if I draw my trend line like that, or like that to be precise, my breakouts start happening here. Okay, my breakout starts happening here. So let's work through this. Can I just hit the buy right then when the breakout happens? No. Right? So now you guys know you can't you can't just immediately enter. But even if you wait for the retest, the retest can still spike down or even make a whole new downtrend. Okay? What if I do this? Just to make things a little bit more difficult. You know, the more difficult things are, the more you guys will think. So that's good. Here, I'm gonna make the trend line hardcore like that. That's a trend line. If you don't see that's a trend line. Let me do this. This is, what day is this? 9.23, right? Do you guys think that's an aggressive trend line? That's too strong? That's too strong, right, the trend line? Okay, let me do this. Now watch carefully. What if I go down, what, what day is this again? 9.23. Let me go down to the five minutes. I'm gonna go to how do you change the dates? Uh, command G? No. Where's the date? Okay, anyways, go to date 23rd. Okay, we're here. Now, does this look an aggressive trend line? Or does this look like a normal trend line?
There you go. There you go. So, what is aggressive to you might not mean aggressive to somebody else. Remember that. What you see is not the final answer. Okay, so there is someone trading that breakout. Yeah, so a time frame. And it's, it's not just time frame, but it also depends on a person's perception. It's one person's perception against the next person's perception. That's why trading is just so random like that. It's just what I see doesn't necessarily mean what is true. But the only way to trade in an absolute perfect way is to get in the rhythm of what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Okay, so let's just look at this. Okay, so would you say this trend line is drawn like pretty much accurately? Like that? And the breakouts start getting uh, poked in this area, like they're just starting to mess with it right there. Okay. So, who wants to practice this one? Who wants to give this a shot? I need 10, 10 volunteers at least. Is the, is the conference room still running? Yeah. Okay. And, okay. Actually, we can make as, as many of you guys want to, to practice this. We're going to start from the top and you guys will just type it in and what you see. And we're going to go piece by piece. Okay? And the more you verbalize or you... And if you're at home, you're, you don't want to type. You want to say this out loud. Saying it out loud will actually help you understand the situation much better. Speak it out. Speak it out. Verbalize it. Okay? So, what's the question? We'll, we'll, go, we'll go into the question right now. We're going to find out if this breakout trade is a trade to be traded. Okay? So, we're going to learn how to look at the trend line. And we don't just see, ah, oh, trend line broke. Let's buy, 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 buy. We're going to understand, should I be buying this to begin with? Right? Because in breakout terminology, that's a buy. End of story. Because they're very technical. They're one, two, three, execute. One, two, three, execute. But one, two, three, execute also means one, two, three, execution. You're dead. You need to do a little bit more homework. Okay? So let's do let's do that homework together. So I'm going to show you how easy it is if you if you work on it together with everybody. All right. So let's start from the top. Markets are going down. Okay, what do you guys, when it goes down, how do you see the retracement of the sellers? Think you're a seller. You're that seller, all 10 of you guys who are volunteering. You're that seller. Okay, fast. How's the retracement? 50%. Are you confident in holding your position? Yes or no? Yes, you're still confident. Markets move down, makes a bit of a lower low, but it comes right back. Looking at the way the green candles are coming right back, are you confident to hold your position? Yes or no? Yes. You guys are still sellers. You get all the way down to here. And then you got a re retracement. Are you confident now? And tell me if your confidence just increased or not. More confident. And then the price gets all the way down to here and then it retraces. Tell me about your confidence now. Still confident. Still there. And now the breakout happened. Do you think that seller quit? So... Those of you who trade this breakout for a buy, will this trade work? No. This was destined to fail to begin with. Okay? So, does everyone start to understand that breakouts are a fantastic thing to trade, but it's a style of trading. It is not an understanding of the market. Yeah. Okay. So if we say sellers probably not trading on the five minute chart and higher time frame buyers won't look as so strong, whatever time frame you look at this, the story still remains the same. This is all the receipts of everyone who's who's sold into this transaction. This is a receipt. It's historical proof of what has happened. Right. Each transaction is a receipt. Each candle is a receipt. Okay, 
Seller has lots of pips in pocket, so they wait for some time for sure. Yeah, you gotta think, and they're and they're aggressive too, right? They're not looking to to get rid of this position anytime soon. They have to be in a loss a little bit, and then they're gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god, let me hold it for a little bit longer. Then they quit. They don't quit at the first sign of a loss. Yeah, the sellers are still dominating. So once the sellers still dominate, what's the right way to look at a breakout now? For a sell side or the buy side? If I'm still on this chart and I see sellers are still in control, which breakout do I want to work with? There you go. There you go. You guys are picking up quick. Look at this. I'm more interested in finding out when is this sucker going to break. Is that correct? That's where the real money is because now I figured out the answer and now my answer is flip sided and it's saying, okay, let whoever wants to buy, buy it. I'm going to take their money afterwards. I'm going give, to give them their turn. It's okay. Let them go first. I'll be patient and I'll wait for my turn. Okay, is everyone with me so far? Uh, uh, Naveed, all, all I said was knowing that the sellers are still strong, I'm going to look to see when the buyers quit so I can resume the strong, uh, strong sell. Okay, so as this break, this uptrend is resuming, those, okay, 10 volunteers again to, to look at this. And those of you who are not like feeling like typing, Say it out loud behind your screen. Talk it out. Walk with me. What's going on with this uptrend? You're that buyer. What happens when this buy pulls back like that? 50%. Are you still confident? Okay. Still confident. Market moves a little bit higher, but the retracement doesn't show any signs. Are you still confident? Then, then you see a massive red candle coming out this low, but then he, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, still holding, but oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But then the candle closes green. Are you still holding? You're still at it. Then the market pushes up a little bit again. No highs. Are you still holding? Yeah, you get a relief when, when you saw that big wick on the bottom. Uh, big tail, sorry. So you're still holding. And then the market pulls back here. It's a 100% pullback from the previous one, but it's still an overall very strong up. At this point, you're like, oh my God, the sellers are a little bit strong. But would you still hold? Yeah, you guys are. You, <laughs> if you want to sell, you have to be the buyer. You got to think like that. That's probably like the quickest hack I get my my traders to do. You want to sell, think like a buyer. Okay. Yeah, Chan, very good. But the hundred percent pullback is creating panic already. Yeah, it's not just the panic of uh, the pullback that's so deep. It's the speed that it came down. It, it took you so long to get up here, but then so quickly you saw that when you were in profit of $7,000, it suddenly became 6000 in one, three in, in three little candles, immediately it took away $1,000 extra. And you're like, all right, at least go back to 7000 At least go back to 7000 right? Isn't that what most traders think? They're, they're like, forget the chart. Let me go back to the same number I was at. Yeah, let's go back to the same number and I'll close. I promise I'll close it at that number. <laughs> They start bargaining with life. So this is very, very common. They, they just start looking at that number. I want to go back to that number at least. So it's very psychological. Yeah, and we've all done it. I've done it too. I used to do that a lot. I, I used to do it all the time. And that really messes you up because you're not looking at the charts. You're just looking at your account balance.
Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, okay, so what happens to that seller? Once that seller gets crushed here, uh, the, the seller comes in and the buyer is starting to panic and he starts to go up again. What's happening to that, uh, to that uh, buyer? Is he still there? He's still holding? He's like, oh, yeah, there's still hope. There's still hope. And then this happens. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, loss, possibly coming down to a stop loss. If they've moved their stop loss higher, it's coming there. They're looking at this area like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And they start executing all sorts of closings, either here, sorry, wrong, whoa, wrong one. Either here, the panic close here, panic close here, panic close, or if they're the bargaining type of people, come on, come on, go back to this price and I'll close it. Come on, come on, come on. They start becoming cheerleaders. The pom-poms come out. Like, come on, baby, we're going back. Okay, so there's two types. One is fear, fearful, the other type is greedy. All right? So, and then you see your sports team go back to profit and you're like, yeah, we're getting up there again and you're now looking to possibly exit. Now, when do you exit? When the green candle's this high? When the green candle is that high, are you exiting? But what happens when you see that green candle and it makes a new high? No one exits. No one exits. At that point, you got another, exactly, you got another hope. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna make a lot of money from this. I'm just gonna hold on. <laughs> but the moment you see that red candle right after it slam down, like boom, you're like, okay, 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 sorry. And you close it. This is the point of the psychological process of that seller, of that buyer, sorry. And you're like, okay, screw this. And then you go rejoice or whatever you have to do because you have some profit. What happens to all those breakout sellers? What happens to them? It almost looks like the trade just went up to stop them out. To them, that's what it looks like. I got stop hunted. Damn effing broker. They're always after me. And then let me just email Naveen and ask him what broker he uses. <laughs> I can show you guys like 30 emails a day I get about brokers. So this happens quite often. Yeah, it happens a lot, it happens a lot. So because it's a, it's a common problem, it's a common problem. So, so all the breakout traders are looking to sell at this stage because they're not selling uh, anywhere up here. They're not anticipating the sell, they're selling after the sell starts to happen. So they're selling very, very late. And then any point that it goes up, it's a stop loss. So that's one thing. The next thing is those of you who noticed this, the thing that gave the buyers hope is an important price to remember. Because now, did you guys notice no higher high? No higher high. No higher high. Did you guys also notice no lower low? No lower low, no lower low, and a probe. That low never happened. But in this process, when you read the entire story from this range, you know exactly around this stage here, you can execute your cells. Because you know Big Daddy, those 10 people in this conference room still have the money to sell. They're ready to go. And the buyers just quit. It's our turn. It's our time. We're going to make it. Yeah. And, and uh, Krista, that's absolutely perfect. When you don't have money on the line, all this you can observe. When you have money on the line, the moment you open a trade in a buy, for example, you don't see anything but a buy. 
If you open a cell, you don't see anything but a cell. Your mind goes blank because that's what happens when a trade runs. You need to, you guys need to practice dealing with that. Meditation is very good for stuff like that. Learning to step away from the screen and uh, taking a break, uh, talking with people and discussing all the stuff and be like, okay, how do I deal with this? Getting in a community to deal with stuff like that. You can't just fix it just by thinking about it. You have to talk about it. You have to you know, deal with your fellow traders who have the same problem. You have to talk to people who've gone through it already and be like, how did you do it? What, what is your hack? And then see if it works for you. If it doesn't, reach out to another person. What did you do? Let me see what, what, what works for you. Let, let me try that. Isn't that right? Isn't that why a lot of you guys are here at my webinar? You want to see like, okay, let's see what he has to teach. Let me see if it's useful for me. The brain is constantly looking for information. And when you find good information, you're like, I can use that. So learning is not necessarily a bad thing. Right? So how many of you guys feel you guys learned something here today? Yeah. And how many of you guys at this point are going to promise me that going forward, you guys will make the changes necessary to not be that first person to get trapped. Say, I promise. Yeah, do not get stuck into this. Do not get stuck into this, uh, you know, sudden movement and uh, impulse thinking. All right. All right, guys, so today, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up now uh and those of you guys who have already received emails for forex watchers it's the end of the month we have opened up some memberships there was an early bird special i think that went out yesterday uh those of you who could not join there is the discount today going out for 25 percent now we don't have the early bird going coming in anymore at 35 percent now it's available for 25 percent so first come first serve uh and i look forward to seeing all of you guys in there Remember, if you guys think I made a change for you guys in this one webinar here, imagine what a community full of traders like this can do for you. So looking forward to seeing many of you guys at Forex Watchers. This will be on YouTube. This will be on YouTube. So look out for the emails for recordings. Look out for the emails for the coupon to join uh, Forex Watchers as well. Thank you all for being here. Until next time, I will see you guys in a few weeks. Uh, I will be in Japan next month. Uh, for those of you who were in San Diego and sent an email, I'm sorry I couldn't meet you guys. I was very busy in San Diego. But Japan, I have started to receive some emails. I, if there's more, let me know. We will meet. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Bye for now.